Hey there folks, Connecting Dots, May 13, day 64 of Fukushima, and no, it just got a little worse. I can't believe it. I wish I could give you some good news here, but you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't want to scare you, but it just got a whole lot worse. And I'm going to start off first with the blocking of information. Now that really pisses me off. It's one thing that the media is not picking it up, you know, and that's why I call them, they're not mainstream in my book. They're called lamestream. Get with it, folks. Turn the TV off and tune in online because you're not going to get any of the information, the real stuff of what's happening in the economy. You know, you're just not going to get it from them. You got to jump on, on board here and you got to spread this stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay on with this because, like I've mentioned before here, I'm right on that little island, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, you know, Canada. Yeah, I'm right here on the West Coast. And my family, you know, they're blind. They, they don't see this. No, it's, it's radiation. They can't smell it. Can't see it. You know, some of them even think it's Febreze, for Christ's sake. What's going on? You know, if this was an oil spill, everyone would be wide awake what's going on here. If you guys with your white cars went out in the morning after a little rainfall and saw a bunch of little black spots on it from oil drops, you'd all be pissed off. But the fact that you can't see this shit, you're all going back to watching Dancing with the Stars, UFC fighting, hockey in Canada, all the other crap. You know what, you need, really need to wake up a lot of you. And I'm sorry if I'm going off here a little bit, but I'm getting a little sick and tired. And, and, and to find out that now I can't even do a proper forecast because the Norwegian Air Institute is no longer putting out their maps. That's what you're looking at right now. Both, by the way, those of you that are new here, I've been putting these forecasts on based on the Norwegian Air Institute. Now, the, the Norwegians decided to track this because back in the day when Fukushima went off, uh, I'm sorry, when uh, Chernobyl went off, they got sprinkled with radiation in Norway. So they figure this time here, since they live upwind from it, yes, because here's Japan and Norway's all the way down, well, they figured, you know what, they're going to track it this time around because they knew it would probably reach their country, and sure enough, it is. And the fact is, not only is it reaching it, but the levels have just gotten higher, and I'm going to show you a, a bunch of series of headlines here, and you can connect your own dots. For those of you who are not taking this seriously, by golly, I hope you're really paying attention. And if you're in Australia, I hope you're paying attention too, because I'm going to show you a quick, cute little map in your your hometown. It's damn near hitting you also. And those web bots, when they predicted that there was going to be a southward, southern flowing sea of humanity, heck, if you can't figure out why we're all going to be flowing south after I show you what's coming on here, then, well, then you know what? Uh, good luck. Good luck. Seriously? Okay, so another thing I want to mention. Somebody says, well, all the levels aren't so high. You have to remember that these levels that are given out here are based on the numbers that are given to the Norwegian Institute from TEPCO. Okay? And I'm going to show you. TEPCO's been holding back, holding back, and slowly the news is begin getting closer and closer to, to the truth of it all. And I'll show you. So the Norwegians are doing their best here to show you what's going on. But the fact is, these are all wrong. We've been in the red for a long time. Okay? That's... If you don't want to believe me, that's okay. I'm not here to prove every single word I said. I'm the one that's been following this stuff. Okay, so let's start off here just to, to, to show you that it, here we go again here. It started in Japan. It says right there. You see this? I'm reading this from right here. Okay, Japan recently announced a massive censorship campaign to silence so-called irresponsible rumors about the nuclear radiation being released from Fukushima. Japan's Weather Chief also censored radiation forecast to prevent panic in ordinary people. Oh, isn't that nice, eh? Yeah, they're not telling you because they don't want you to panic. Well, guess what? The same thing is happening here, is happening here in Canada and the United States. I mentioned here in Day 62 update how the EPA is no longer monitoring the, the, the situation. They've taken down all the extra uh, 40 mobile uh, radiation units that they had uh, up in the Aleutian Islands, Hawaii, uh, Alaska. They had a bunch of mobile ones. To, uh, sorry, a bunch of uh, stationary ones that they've set out. Uh, they've taken them all down. In Canada, same thing, folks. They, 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 we had the radiation monitors that were located in the city of Vancouver. They've taken them down because we're right on the west coast, and they know darn well that the wind hits here on the west coast, and they're on top of these buildings, and the radiation monitors were going to go off. So what they do? They took them down off the buildings. They closed the monitoring station down through the month of April when things were picking up, and they went and started monitoring down in the Kamloops area. Those of you that live in Canada or BC, more specifically, you know where Kamloops is. It's down in the valley. The wind's never going to hit it. You're never going to get the rather the, the real readings. Now to make matters even worse, Canada now 
has decided now that in the event of economic collapse or hardship or with food shortages, they will not tell you, yes, I got the link for that, that's not it there, but I'll put it down below. They will not tell you when your food has radiation in it. Did you get that? You Canadians, you need to favorite this, you need to tell your friends. I'm going to put the link down below in, in the box of this video. It says show more. Go click on show more and there's a link there from the Canadian Health Canada. It tells you right there the event of food shortages or economic hardship. They don't want to tell the Canadians. They're not going to tell you there's radiation in the food. They're going to export it too, I believe. They're not even going to tell exporters. And the reason why? Same as the Japanese. They don't want to create panic. So enjoy eating your radiation food because guess what? This is not going away. So like I mentioned, things aren't getting better again. Bloomberg News, Japan reactor core damaged worse than feared. Delaying cleanup. And by the way, how long do you think the delaying is? No, not just a couple of months. We're talking years now. Okay, so those of you who are wondering if we're actually in a meltdown, and I'm sorry if I'm taking a little bit of a strong uh, tone here, but you know, I've been getting a lot of flack. No, no, there's not this, there's not that. We are in meltdown. They're admitting now. They're finally admitting to one. Here we go. Nuclear meltdown at Fukushima plant. One of the reactors at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi power plant did suffer a nuclear meltdown. Japanese officials admitted for the first time today, describing a pool of molten fuel at the bottom of the reactor's containment vessel. What do you think's going on here? Y you guys need to snap out of it here. They've admitted to one. I'm willing to bet anytime soon we're going to find out that th there's two more that are melting down. There's all kinds of troubles here. You guys, you need to stay on top of it. I'm not going to read all the, 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 whole, the, entire, the entire story here, but you guys, like I said, go click on show more and you can find out for yourself what's going on. Read the entire story. I'm just going to go through the headlines so everyone knows what's going on. Okay, here we go again. And it all started back here. April 23rd was the first time where they started releasing a little bit of truth and they said right here, Japan admits Daily radioactive release from Fukushima at 154 trillion becquerels, many times higher than previously announced. Nuclear uh, Commission blames calculation error. Come on, give me a break. There was no error. They knew damn well. They didn't want to create a panic. So it's all about releasing the information once, you know, a little bit at a time. So there's no panic here. It's sickening. Okay, so like I mentioned, the, the, the NILU, Norwegian Air Institute, ends public forecast as map shows large radiation clouds now over U.S. and Canada. Yeah, I'll get to the clouds. That's May 12th there. I'll get to those. Don't worry. Yeah, you know, I don't want to set off the panic, but I'm letting you know it's not getting any better. And here's another one here. Real severe problem cooling unit number three reactor. Hydrogen explosion possible. Okay, you can go read the story. I'm just giving you headlines so you know the situation is not getting better. It's official. Fukushima was hit with a full-blown nuclear meltdown. Pool of radioactive lava could be melting its way out. Okay. Next one, government official. It is fact that nuclear fuel melted a hole through reactor number one. <sighs> situation at number one reactor could escalate rapidly if the lava melts through the reactor vessel. Fears that reactor number three, which contains MOX plutonium fuel, may have suffered a meltdown. And by the way, if you don't know what that MOX plutonium fuel is, it's what they refer to as a dirty bomb. It's ten times more radioactive. It's the spent fuel rods. I mentioned it before that every one of these reactors, and there's 400 of them around the world, the United States has 23 of them, but right at Fukushima there's six of them. We have problems right now with three of them. Each reactor in the core itself is equal to a thousand atomic bombs. However, once those fuels are, the fuel rods are no longer good, they no longer give off the, the heat necessary to boil the water, create the steam to turn the turbines to make the electricity, those rods are called spent fuel rods. They're, they're, they have to be kept cool anyways. They're put, unfortunately, in these type of reactors, they're put on the second floor of the reactor. So when the reactor blew up, not only are you looking at a thousand atomic bombs within the reactor, but you're looking at 10 to 20 times more radiation within the spent fuel rods, which is the MOX fuel. Folks, you really need to catch up on this stuff. I'm going to put some links here on radiation fallout. Go find out what's a dirty bomb. Go, you need to get prepared. This is all going to be up in the north. It is in the northern hemisphere. You'll see when I go show you these maps, you're not going to like it here. Okay, again, Japanese nuclear expert says melting has now made cooling very difficult. Man, I wish I had some good news here. You know, I, I don't like saying this stuff, but you're not going to hear it on CTV or anywhere else in any, any other station. They're not talking about this stuff. TEPCO admits multiple holes found in bottom of number one reactor's pressure vessel. Man, oh man, I 
can't believe this. Here we go again. Plan to flood Fukushima reactor could cause new blasts, expert warns. Email from Japanese officials says high density radiation will be released May 8th if situation continues. And you're saying, why is he going back to that old story? Because it is May 6th. I just want to let you know that this was all planned. They know damn well that the radiation was going up. They announced it in the news that it was about to go up on the 8th. And that's why we find ourselves today, May 13th, and there's no, mo no longer a radiation forecast map being put out. It's no longer being released to the public. I'll show you one here that we've gotten in through the back door here. You're not going to like the radiation that's spewing out, folks. I'm sorry. They're, they're, they're doing everything they can to hide this stuff. And uh, it's sickening. It's really just really sickening. I can't believe it. But I want to let you know that it started on May 8th where we first got the release here what was coming down the pipes and this is the map that uh, well a lot of you don't want to look at but uh, I'm gonna be damned here if I'm gonna hide the truth and you know let you all think that it's all fine yes that is all of North America unbelievable but you know what and if you look down below here you see how it kinda of cuts off there at the right at near the end of Florida and uh, well there's nothing in Mexico there at this section uh, sex, uh, at this time right now but you realize how there's almost a clean line here well, that's the end of your, uh, not the end, but that's where it kind of dies off the, the northern hemispheres right there. So you got a high ridge pressure in there that's keeping most of that radiation up in the northern hemisphere. And that's the reason why the, the web bots had predicted that there's going to be a southward flowing river of humanity. Can you not see it now? Those of us that have done the education, we know we want to protect our kids and anyone else, you know, unless you're like 65 and over and you don't really care, then you don't really... I guess you can keep eating radiated food and breathing in the radiation because like I'll put a link here at the end of this radio from CTV uh, at the end of this video at the end of, uh, of the video here you'll see a link and it's uh, from CTV News and he interviewed uh, Gordon Edwards for, um, as a second night after Fukushima and he's blatantly honest and tells you how there's hundreds of radioactive particles spewing out of Fukushima so if you want to sit there and pretend this is not happening it's happening, okay? And we're not, we're, this is not down here in the, at the light. We're all the way down at the other end here, okay? It's, yeah. Okay? That's xenon gas 133. And you know when xenon gas 133 is detected? Is what? Well, go watch the video that I'll link up here and you'll understand that when you got xenon gas 133, there's hundreds of radio, other, other radioactive particles. And the ones that are hardest to detect are the ones that are nastiest uh, towards people that they, they harm you the most okay I gotta finish this up unfortunately here so I'm gonna be using this map here because I have a feeling that the uh, back door here that I'm gonna give you guys a link to in the description box make sure you go take a look at it will be closed soon and this map here uh, again it starts from the um, earlier on and you can see as it progresses on here uh, you'll see how the whole thing you know what was that March so you'll be able to see how it progresses on and that's cesium-137 right there okay that lasts uh, what is it 30 years half-life 30 years mm-hmm yeah and then no it's not gone in 60 years no 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 it takes longer than that so don't you know don't be fooled by the the half-life thing okay okay next one like I said I got a few of them here I want to show you that that are not good and uh, that's uh, iodine-131 like I said the dates right there in North America, USA, Canada, it's not good. Vancouver Island, don't drink the milk. I've told you guys before that all this stuff lands in the milk. The milk is like the canary in the coal mine. So when uh, this stuff spews down, falls down in the raindrops, the cows will be the first one to drink it up. And the fat, the, the radioactive particles attached to the milk. So if you're drinking coffee, you don't want to be drinking that cream, using cream, because there's more radioactive particles attached to the uh, fat particles than there would be, let's for say, uh, in skim milk. That That's not saying skim milk is safe. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying most of it is concentrated in the fat, so the cream's going to have more. So again, most likely solution to fuel melting through reactor one is a concrete wall around number one. Could now take years to encapsulate because of high radiation. Like I said, I didn't want to scare you, but you folks need to be aware that when the web bots are predicting a southward flowing sea of humanity, there's a reason why. So I'll put a link down here. We're on the uh, Pal Talk every night, and the, will, the room keeps getting bigger. Hope to see you out there tonight. It's Friday. Pass this along. Give it a favorite. Everyone needs to know. Take care, folks. Have a good weekend.